today, July 19, 2020. We are about to talk about biblical declarations. Biblical declarations is the topic of this morning. And I'm going to be enjoying sharing with you many wonderful things that you need to know. There are people always asking, what, are, what is the scripture that I can utilize if I am sick? What is the scripture that I can utilize if I am afraid? Etc. They always wonder. And, you know, today through the internet we have access to many sources. So not like it, back in the day that pastors were bombarded all the time with that question. Today most people, they just research online. And I want to talk to you about it and what is the importance of the biblical declarations. But again, to our viewers, feel free to download the bulletin. And the website is vchurch.us. And feel free to do it. There are good points there. And I hope you have your bulletins ready here to write your notes. We start this study reading the scripture in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Joshua 1.8. All together, let's read it. Always remember what is written in the Word of God. Speak about it and study it day and night. Then you can be sure to obey what is written there. If you do this, you will be wise and successful in everything you do. What a promise. What a promise to be wise and successful in everything you do. Let me ask you a, a first question right off the bat. How do you feel when you just don't know how to do certain things? How do you feel? Inadequate, right? Sometimes you feel like a little bit dumb, like a fool. You say, I hate that I don't know how to use this, right? Well, this is the promise. Listen, this is what the scripture says. If you study the scripture day and night and you obey what is written, you will be what? Wise, wise, that's a very important word in this passage, to become wise in what else? Successful. You don't want to be a loser, right? How many losers are in the house today? Let me see your hands. I'm glad. <laughs> we are not losers. No. We win. Right. We succeed. You, my friend, watching, you succeed. I hope you succeed. And there is one way to, su to be successful in everything is by studying, day speaking the Word of God day and night. Day and night. Remember what is written in the Word of God. That's right. Do you know what the Bible says about walking right in life? Because that is the problem. People think sometimes, well, I'm going to grab one scripture. And that scripture will tell me something amazing about the future and that will be it without understanding that what we need to do is to learn what the bible says about my walk in life you see that my walk in life biblical declarations work only when you are doing what is right please everybody read out loud with me this slide biblical declaration i don't hear you Biblical declarations work only when you are doing what is right. Why? Because biblical, biblical declarations are not magic. Don't get confused. Don't get confused. Biblical declarations are not magic. It's not like you're going to take one scripture and magically something amazing is going to happen in your life. No, it's not that way. Because biblical declarations work only when you are doing what is right. I hope you understand that you have to do what is right, then the biblical declarations will work. Okay? They are not magic. You know, abracadabra. What is that? There are many, many abracadabra Christians there. there. Do you know that? Many abracadabra Christians. They just think, I'm going to get one scripture, and that's it. You know? No, it's not magic. I want to give you a fact. There is a constant battle between your flesh and the Holy Spirit. You know that. Your flesh is always trying to take you somewhere which is not spiritual. Whether it's fear 
or anger or doubt, jealousy, envy, anything. Your flesh is going to try to take you to places that are not what God wants you to go. In your mind, in your heart, there is a constant battle between your flesh and the Holy Spirit. Who is going to win? It's up to you. Listen, Galatians chapter 5 verse 17, first section. The sinful self wants what is against the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants what is against the sinful self. They're, they are always fighting against each other. They are always fighting against each other. It's a fight between your flesh and the Holy Spirit. So if I ask you a question today, that constant battle that you have, that I have, who is winning so far? The flesh or the Holy Spirit? Today, right now, who is winning? Hey, Amen. Right now, the Holy Spirit is winning because you are worshiping God. You are listening to God's word. You are paying attention. You want to get more from God. So the Holy Spirit is winning. It's the right thing to do. Remember, biblical declarations work only when you are doing the right thing. But that battle is always there inside of you. I'm going to give you today five steps to be able to walk right. Then the biblical declarations will work for you okay step number one you have to surrender to the holy spirit and do what is right Amen. remember biblical declarations are not magic they will work if you are doing what is right correct yes. step number one you need to surrender to the holy spirit and do what is right not just sunday morning That's good. what about friday night you know, nobody gets drunk on a Friday night by accident. <laughs> it was planned. Yeah. Since Monday morning, the whole week, I'm going to do this. As soon as I get my check, I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Step number one to make those biblical declarations effective in your life is that you have to surrender to the Holy Spirit and do what is right. Do what is right. Remember that. What Joshua says, chapter 1, verse 8. You need to remember what is written in the Word of God. Speak about it. Think about it. A lot of people don't get it. They think that church is a Sunday morning deal. Okay, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to watch the video. And I'm going to be a good boy, a good girl for one hour, okay? And after that, leave me alone. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. People don't get it. This, this is not the way that the Lord wants us to live. Some people say, but that's boring. No, it's not boring. It's exciting because it's about becoming wise and successful. Hello! It's about becoming wise and successful. Hello, losers! Hello, losers! Why do you think you are losing, losers? Why do you think you are losing, losers? Because you are not being successful. Because you don't want to do what is right. You don't want to get into the world. Continue failing. Welcome to the loser's world. It's your choice. But if you meditate in the word of God day and night, day and night, day and night. You reflect about it. You apply the principles. Walk the walk. It's not just talking the talk. How many... Abracadabra, Christians are in the world, and you see them everywhere. They say things, they quote you scriptures, but their life sucks. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about living it, making it real every single day, the whole day. Yeah. That is what would make the difference in your life. Step number two, impart grace to everyone and do not judge anyone. Everybody wants to be forgiven. Everyone wants to be loved everyone wants to receive mercy i was driving friday morning from dallas to odessa to great odessa 
to fabulous Odessa, to amazing Odessa. Can I hear an amen? amen? Yeah, amazing Odessa. This is our town. We love Odessa. If you don't like Odessa, move. We don't want you here. If you don't like Odessa, get out of here. Because we, the ones that live in Odessa, we love Odessa, okay? If you don't like it, get out of here. We just want people that love Odessa, love our town, and fight for our town. Well, I'm driving to glorious Odessa, and I didn't pay attention to the speed. Mm, and I was, I believe, over 75. Tracy said to me, Tracy says, Gian, there is a cop there. Oh, my gosh. And, of course, you know what happens, right? Miracles happen. Your food suddenly is not that heavy. And I immediately prayed. Oh, Father, please have mercy on me. <laughs> I don't want a ticket. <laughs> well, praise God, the, the police was not after me and went and I'm, I'm going, thank you, Jesus. Everyone wants mercy. Now, the key is this. Why in the world is it that we want mercy, but we refuse to impart mercy to others? That's not Christian if you are angry with people, if you are mad at people, if you don't want to forgive people, you are doing what is wrong. Right. You are not doing what the Bible says. Therefore, you are not wise. Therefore, you cannot succeed. You get that? Right. You have to do it right. Forgive. Forgive. Impart grace and do not judge anyone. You know, what is the deal of judging people for their hairdo? For their watch, for their shoes. What is the problem? Why people have to be judging others because they wear the mask or they don't wear the mask? Because they are tall or short, because they are chubby or skinny, because they are wearing these gigantic glasses or not glasses, or big nose or big ears, whatever. People are just looking for something to judge others for their behavior, for, for their car. For the color of their shirt. Why people do that? You know what? That's not biblical. That's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to impart grace to everyone and to not judge anybody. Step number three. God is the ultimate one who blesses people. Why God is blessing person A and person B and person C? Because this is his choice. Some people are going to receive more blessings in one area than in other areas. And what's the problem with that? God is the ultimate one who blesses people. So if he decides to bless somebody with something, well, praise the Lord. And if he decides not to bless you with certain things, well, play, praise the Lord anyways. Step number four, do not compete with anyone else but you. Stop competing with somebody else. L let the other people do their own thing. Compare, compete with yourself. Compare yourself with today, the today of yourself with yesterday's of you today, or whatever, you, yourself. <laughs> compete with yourself. That's the point. Compete with yourself. Are you becoming a better believer or not? Yeah. Okay. What's the answer, friends? Are you a better believer today than you were yesterday? Amen. Well, that's the challenge. Forget about the rest. Forget about your mom and your dad and your spouse and your children. Forget about your pastor. Forget about your friends in the church. Forget about other churches. Forget about it. Concentrate on yourself. It's, it's about the Lord and you. Do not compete with anyone. And step number five. Declaring is a life statement. You know, declaring is not just speaking. You know, we declare, we speak out loud. It's a declaration. I read, I read something out loud, I'm declaring. If I am doing it in public, it's proclaiming. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But more than anything, declaring is a life statement. I want you to see for a moment this light. And I want you to notice that this slide shows the picture of a man walking. And you see the shadow. 
Can you see the shadow? Okay. That is what really matters in you, in your life. It's what, it, what you are projecting behind after you walk. What is the shadow? What's the smell? What's the aroma? What is the memory you are leaving behind? Declaring is a life statement. It's not magic words. I declare that I am this and that. Come on. That's religions, my friend. It's just your religion. It's just you are used to say things. I'm going to take you to biblical declarations, of course. But what I need you to understand is more than anything, declaring is a life statement. Now, Joshua said that. The importance of Reflecting in God's word day and night, 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 all the time. You need to know God's word to live God's way in order to declare the future, correct? But if you don't know God's word, you will not live God's way. That's why you have to read God's word and listen to God's word and listen, and listen to preaching and preaching. So you will learn more and more and more in order to declare the future. But I want to Talk to you about four words that are important. The difference between, between prophecy and prophesy. Prophecy is a noun. It's the action of the future being said by God. Correct? Prophesy is the verb. It's the action of doing it. Prophet is the person who prophesies the prophecy. You got it? And eschatology is the doctrine that talks about the end times. When you are talking about the end times and declaring the future and all that, biblically speaking, is known as eschatology. Okay? Now, we're going to talk a little bit about it before we start talking about the declarations. Because you need to know what's going on. So, what about the second coming of our Lord Jesus? Because many people are talking about it today. They say, it's about to come, etc. Okay, let's talk about important scriptures related to it. Matthew 24, 14. The good news I have shared about God's kingdom will be told throughout the world. It will be spread to every nation. Then the end will come. Words of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a very important sign that the end, it's about to come. When? When the gospel is being preached everywhere in the world. And although there are many places where the gospel has been preached, still there are many places where the gospel has not been preached. When the gospel is preached in all those countries, especially countries that are under oppression, and I'm not going to mention the names here because if I say it, social media is going to put me in jail just because I mentioned their names. The point is this. There are countries under oppression today with dictators. The gospel there is not freely being preached. Once the gospel is preached everywhere, then the end will come. Still, we have things to see. But there is another scripture in Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31. There will be something in the sky that shows the Son of Man is coming. This is the Lord Jesus talking about himself. There will be something in the sky that shows the Son of Man is coming. All the people of the world will cry. You see this? All the people of the world will cry. Everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds in the sky. Everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds in the sky. Everyone. He will come with power and great glory. He will use a loud trumpet to send his angels all around, around the earth. They will gather his chosen people from every part of the earth. It's going to be noticeable. Those who are alive, I don't know if I, I will be alive then. I don't know. I might, but I don't know. Because when the Lord Jesus is going to come back, nobody knows. Nobody knows. It doesn't matter how <coughs> profound the books and seminars and DVDs and sessions that you can go to churches to hear fabulous scholars telling you this and that thing. 
all these treasures that they found in the scripture and revelations and people in different parts of the world come up with all those things. It doesn't matter how much they know, there is one thing that they don't know is when. <laughs> so we just don't know. But there are some signs. Until the day when he will show up in the sky. And you have to be aware of the future that is getting closer and closer, but it's not there yet. Okay. Remember this. Biblical decorations work only, only when? When you are doing what is right and you know what the Lord is doing. Because you don't know, if you don't know what the Lord is doing in your life and you are just declaring, you're just wasting your time in saliva. You just, you, you really need to do what is right. And you need to know what the Lord is doing. You know, God speaks a divine language. Do you know that? The Lord doesn't speak English only. The Lord doesn't speak Hebrew only. Or Aramaic. Or Spanish. Or Italian. Or Chinese. Or Filipino. Or Russian the Lord speaks all the languages. Yes, but his, his main language is a divine language. And that is the language that should be being spoken in your heart, mind, mouth, home, workplace, and conversations. Is that what you have in your mind? The word of God? Because what is the point of saying biblical declarations, friends, when we have a mouth that is Horrible, the kind of things that we say. I, 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 want, I want to talk to you about this for a second, my friend. Let's suppose you are a good Christian, okay? And you know certain scriptures. Okay, you want to declare those scriptures because those are good to you. Related with health or money or happiness, okay? That, that's good. You know the scriptures and you like to declare those scriptures. But you just say that because you want the promise. But if you are not speaking God's language really in your mind, heart, in, in your workplace, in your home, the words that you are saying, they, they are not right. You go to a home and they say, here's a jar with lemonade. Would you like some lemonade? And you say yes or no. And on the other hand, they have a bowl with dirty water that they are using to wash a little towel. You see? Which one are you going to pick to drink of? The bowl with the dirty water or the jar of lemonade? Obviously, right? Okay? So you have to make a decision what is the source of what you are going to drink of? Your heart is that. It's like a source of what you are speaking. But you cannot be given lemonade and dirty water all the time. Do you understand the point? God speaks this divine language that declarations, the, the Bible, the verses are there. Yes, but you have to get it right entirely in your life. Your conversations must be filled with that kind of language in your work in your workplace when you are by yourself in the car when you get upset when you are sad when you are frustrated i told you earlier step number 5 in making these biblical declarations work declaring is a life statement it's not just speaking it's not magic it's not magic Declaring is a life statement. Okay. With that being said, I'm going to introduce you to several scriptures that I know you will like to reflect in the right time in your own home. They all are listed in your bulletin, so you can just write the verse after the quote of the book and chapter. The first declaration that we should... Say 
periodically is about eternal life. So we all are going to read out loud this as we see it on, this, on the screen. Ready? I give my sheep eternal life. They will never die, and no one can take them out of my hand. That is a powerful scripture that you should say about eternity, eternal life. John 10, 28. You want to print it, put it in a frame, write it in a paper, put it in your car, in the bathroom, wherever you want to put it. A sign with neon colors in the night when you are afraid, fine. Okay, next one, protection. Psalm 91, 1, 2. Please, let's read all together. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalm 91, friends, is a psalm of divine protection. But it starts, it's a promise that begins with a condition. It's, to, it's about dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. Because it is impossible that you can claim protection when you are not living, dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. I hope you understand that. Next one is about healing. Isaiah 53.5. 53.5. Ready? All together. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Powerful. Powerful. But guess what? This promise is conditioned to understand that Jesus is the Lamb of God. But Jesus is not medicine, my friend, that you go and get from the pharmacy, Isaiah 53. I need two bottles, please, of Isaiah 53. So, okay, I take it. I'm healed by the wounds of Jesus. No, that's not, that's not that this works. You have to see the whole package. The Lord Jesus, certainly, by his wounds, we are healed. But also, you talk about here, about the whole concept of him becoming the son of God, your Lord. Next scripture, restoration, Isaiah 40, 31. All together, please. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You see, that works, of course, for those who are in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. They hope in the Lord. Beautiful declaration. Declaration about peace. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. All together. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God will come to you, but it's based on what? That you are presenting all your requests with what? With thanksgiving. It's not about just asking. I have said to you guys many times, when you are on your road, when you are about to go to your work on a night trip, you always pray, please, Father, protect me, send your angels. Please, I ask you, bless my children. You say all your prayers. You are asking him, right? And thank you, Lord, that I have the vehicle, that I have the gas, that I have a job, that I... Thank you, Lord, for these things. You see, you present your prayers... Your request, your petitions, but you give thanks, right? And then you have peace. Just don't forget that when you arrive to your destination, you take the same time to say, thank you, Lord, that you brought me safely, that I am fine. Thank you, Father, that I went to my work the whole day. I'm back in my house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What is the word that we need to say most frequently all day long? Thank you. Thank you. People are doing things for you. Are you an ungrateful person? And in another entitled one? 
We need to be people that give, give thanks to God all the time and being grateful one another. Another powerful declaration about joy. Psalm 118, 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Powerful scripture we say we should say every day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's about being intentional into the presence of God. The Lord, you made this day. This is going to be a great day. This is going to be a great day. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. For strength and confidence, Psalm 27, 1, all together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Beautiful passage. Psalm 27. Strength and confidence. Yes. You can trust in Him. You receive from Him that confidence. Not being afraid of anything. What about harmony? Psalm 133. 1. All together. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. You can be in your home eating a simple plate with whatever simple meal you have. And if everyone is there, grateful, peacefully, intentionally trying to enjoy the meal and the time, is going to be a good meal. How many times I have been in houses with the most exquisite food, beautiful sets of Dishes and cups and all kind of refined things. But all that I can see in the eyes of most people there is hate. And they can't stand one another. And I'm just there invited because they invite the pastor. And I just look at them and I'm, I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for them. I just think, poor people. They might have the stuff. But they don't, they, don't, they don't have a clue what it is to live together in unity. You know, the goodness of God, the blessings of God, they come with money if you want to receive it and if you work for it. Yes. But what's the point of having things or not having things if there, if there is no unity and harmony in your own home? You know, here in our church, we have had our moments, three years and eight months or something like that, of the church and we had had our moments and we had moments when we had people here against me and against each other and what a horrible service like that awful and being honest not always was other people's fault sometimes was my fault amen. did you say amen <laughs> thanks <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> but it's true. Because nobody's perfect. That's right. And when I had those seasons with people against each other, against me, and against my wife, and against somebody else, I'm like, man, that's horrible. What kind of service is that? And in my home, Seasons when I was struggling with problems with my wife or the kids or in-laws, stuff like that. That's just horrible. That's not godly. But how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Amen. But you have to work for it. Now, about the future, this is a very popular scripture that we see in many places, in many homes, right? Jeremiah 29, 11. All together. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Beautiful. That's right. The great future in the Lord. Provision, Matthew 6.33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all the things you need will be given to you. All things will be given to you when you seek first his kingdom. 
If you are broke, my friend, if you are watching and you are broke, maybe you have not been seeking God's kingdom first. Or you probably were making wrong decisions because the Lord wants to give you everything you need, but the condition is seek first His kingdom. Next scripture, prosperity. Some people say, I don't think that God wants me to prosper. Well, you obviously don't know the scripture. So let me educate you here a little bit with Deuteronomy 39. All together, friends. Let's read it. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your fields. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you as he took delight in blessing your ancestors. It's his delight to bless his people. Now, remember, these are not magical words. The biblical decorations work if you do what is right. So here, basically, it says clearly that he will bless all the work of your hand. So how in the world people want to be blessed with declarations, but they don't like to work? No, my friend. You have to work. God works, and everybody should be working. Even if you are retired, even if you are in disability, you need to work because somebody has to clean that house. Somebody has to keep that kitchen clean. Somebody has to... To do something. You cannot be there unless you are paralyzed or physically, it's physically impossible for you to do anything. That is the only exception. The only exception. Otherwise, everyone should be doing something in the house. Everybody should be doing something in the house. It doesn't matter how old are you or how young the kids are. Everybody should be doing something in the house. Amen. And the same things in the church. Everybody, you need to find something to do for God. That's right. Not for me, not for Victory Church, That's right. for God. That's right. You need to find something to do for Him. That's right. And of course, for those who work for companies, come on people, you cannot be wasting time on your phone playing all day. Because nobody's watching you. You have your work done in your computer. But here you have your personal device just wasting time. That, that's just wrong. Remember, biblical decorations work when you do what is right. We don't need to be stealing from the employer. You're being paid by the hour. Get busy during the hour. There is always something to do for the company. For your employer. When I hire people, you know, I'm not mean to anybody, but I watch them because I pay them by the hour. And I just hope you will do something in this hour that you are being paid. But imagine if for a long period of time of those hours, the person is just there, whistling, watching the phone, playing with the phone. And, and, and you know, I just hear... To me, that's stealing. Are you stealing? If you are being paid by the hour, you have a contract with your company and you are wasting time when you are on the clock, when you are being paid, you are stealing. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's not wise. Work when you are being paid to work. That's the right thing to do. Why you have to be looking for a shortcut? You know, that's the problem. You are not doing the right thing and then you expect miracles and blessings because you said the biblical declaration. Come on, people. That doesn't work that way. Ministry, 2 Corinthians 5, 18. Well, Gianna, I really don't know about ministry. You know, you talk about serving God. I really don't know. Okay, well, let's go to one scripture so you will know. Let's all together read. God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, gave us the ministry of reconciliation. 
What is the meaning of that? That you can share with somebody about your faith. Oh, you know, that, that I cannot do. That I cannot do. I'm not good to share that. I'm not good to say anything about, about God. Well, don't do it then. Do you hear me? Don't do it. It's your life. It's not my life. Let me say that one more time, my friend. It's your life. It's not my life. You don't want to brush your teeth? It's your life. It's not my life. You don't want to pay taxes? It's your life. It's not my life. You don't want to preach the gospel when you know what is the result of the gospel in your life? It's your life. It's not my life. You don't want to serve God? It's your life. It's not my life. You don't want to put an effort to do something for God? It's your life. It's not my life. I hope you get it. Fruitful life. Psalm 37.4. Let's read it all together. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Why I don't have this? Why I don't have that? Why, why, why? Well, here's the answer. When you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. But if you keep trying to get whatever you want without taking into consideration God. You know, because the problem is many people see God like, uh, like insurance. Yeah, I have my policy. I'm covered. Fine. In His mercies, He is not going to kick you out of the kingdom. But it's very different when you, my friend... You delight yourself in the Lord. You don't see God as an obligation. You don't see God as a, something that is mandatory in your life. It's a Sunday morning deal. You see God as your best friend. The one that you really like to be with, talk to, relate to, have communion with. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Many things are going to come to you when you finally understand that. Next Sunday, on July 26th, the worship service number 200, we are going to talk about inner transformation, outward manifestation. And you know what? In all languages, most of languages, there is an academy that regulates the language. For instance, in, Spain, in Spanish, there is an academy that regulates the language. Same thing happens in Italian, French, and other languages. But in English, there is no academy that regulates the language. I don't know if you knew that. But it's a fact. There is no organization or entity that regulates the language. It's very interesting. English is one of the few languages without regulation. Well, I decided to add a new noun and a new verb to English. In the... The word is intum, intum, which is inner transformation, outward manifestation. So if you are experiencing intum, you are going to do good. If you are not experiencing intum, you should be intuming, experiencing that inner transformation for an outward transformation. That is the message for next Sunday. But again... Step number five, I told you about declaration. Declaring is a lifestyle statement. Your lifestyle, your lifestyle, that's the, the most important thing. Now, if you have never given your heart to the Lord Jesus, I want to give you one scripture, Romans 10, 9. Let's all together read it. If you openly say, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from death, you will be saved. You will be saved, my friend. Receive the salvation from heaven. All that you got to do is give your heart to the Lord. So I invite you to do that. There is a prayer that you will see on the screen in a moment. Say with me. You will experience great things in your life once you do what is right. Biblical decorations are like that. Join me in this prayer, please. Dear God, I open my heart to you, Lord. I confess my sins before you. I am so sorry. I need you, Lord. I need to change. I want to obey you and trust you and serve you forever, my Lord. 
Starting today, I want to see life and people exactly as you do. Please help me, Lord. My friends, it is not about our behavior. It is all, all based on the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ paid the price. Say with me, I am forgiven and saved by faith in Jesus. Therefore, I can also declare my life is going to be great and blessed this year 2020. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Friends, receive the blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a beautiful rest of your Sunday, and hopefully we'll see you here soon. Remember the broadcast during the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, 7 p.m. We want to see you soon. From darkness see you later. Light. Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight. Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served. I know, I know, I know, I know. Thank you for watching Victory Church. Please feel free to contact us. Our email address is info at vchurch.us and our phone number is 432-614-9798.